Dr. Fritz, how are you doing today? Uh, well, again, I'm doing well. <laughs> So for the last several months, uh, Dr. Fritz and I have been doing these updates, and they tend to be that, uh, updates to what R&D has been working on. They've been going out to the innovation group and a couple others that are interested, and we're uh, making a slight adjustment to where we're, we're now. We'll do those uh, every other week for the innovation group whenever the innovation group does not have their alignment meeting. But during those weeks that we do have our innovation group alignment, this is a bit redundant. So we thought, you know what? Let's talk about some ideas. So that's what we're going to start doing. Every other week, we'll be sending out these videos and just discussing uh, any newly submitted ideas, and we will exclude all challenges uh, from from these discussions. But any ideas that have been submitted, things we're working on, um, just everything idea related, roadblocks we have, ways that people could improve their ideas. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll we'll try this. We'll see how it goes. If anyone has any feedback, we'd we'd love to hear it. Um, We'll start off with, uh, and we're going to, we're starting in, we, we can't go back to the beginning of the catalog. It would take us quite a while to get caught up. So we're starting with uh, July of uh, 23. So we'll, we'll be, I think we've got eight ideas here. We're going to discuss real quick. Uh, and they span from uh, July 1st up until present. So starting off, we had Mr. Hugh Isles submit a uh, idea revolving around a right of way budget tool. And kind of the thought was to get a team together in pre-con to uh, really focus on dialing in best practices when it comes to right-of-way budgets. This is an area that probably lacks a bit of understanding, if I understand uh, Hugh's submission correctly, and a lot of opportunity to prevent fee erosion in there. We good, Cesar? Oh, okay. You had a little... I didn't understand what right-of-way was. So that was. Uh, I think uh, I was gesturing. I was... I wasn't paying attention. That's per usual. Newsflash. Yeah, James wasn't paying attention. Uh, so anyway, Hugh, back to your idea. Uh, seemed very interesting. Uh, the biggest thing holding this one back, if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Fritz, was the 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 reach. Uh, whenever we went through and scored this, it had uh, basically pre-con reach. We tried to really focus on the primary uh, effects, not the second and third order. We realized that there would be benefits to the project teams and to the um, – trade partners and downstream to the owner and all that through potential cost savings. But we really look at those primary impacts and this really seemed like it was mostly going to help pre-con out. So that's, uh, it's, it's, it's in, it's in the queue, but it is down there a little ways because of that low reach. So keep, uh, keep at it, you, uh, you want to talk a little bit about Ethan Brule's RO welding? Sure. Ethan Brule submitted an idea, uh, essentially about, getting together a, a welding team at RO, a, a welding rig with certified mechanics stationed at the yard to promptly address unforeseen welding needs. Um, and so it's essentially having our own welders on hand would reduce costs, things of that nature, not have to worry about availability. Uh, from what I understand, welding can be kind of, it can be hard to find welders. I believe that you kind of said something about that nature. Yeah, they're, uh, they're not cheap and they're not all over the place either. So that would help alleviate some of those issues. And uh, one of the issues with, with the idea was uh, we, we don't have a good idea of how often these welding needs are, are needed. And so it had a, a relatively low reach. We didn't know who all it was going to affect, a relatively low impact because we don't know how often these things are happening. But we're unsure of both, so our confidence was a little low. So perhaps, you know, reaching out to Ethan or if Ethan reaches out to us and lets us know about these things, we can we can up that score a little bit. Definitely. Yeah, Ethan, if you're catching this, you can uh, find that uh, the appeal process in Iris. Uh, we'll put a link in the video to get you over to Iris. We'll also put a link in the uh, for all, all these ideas that we touch on down there so that if someone's like, oh, that's a really good idea, I want to go more work that. Do, I didn't know yeah. I was out there. Or maybe someone's like, hey, I'm already working on something like that. Let me... Uh, let me tell you about it. We can we can make that happen. Yeah, that, that low reach and low impact, and uh, I think there's probably some ignorance on our behalf there, but we, we like to learn. Lots. 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 That's why we're so blissful. <laughs> uh, the next idea we had, I, I think this was still in July, if I'm not mistaken, was from uh, Mr. Justin McAfee. Who? 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 Hmm. Justin McAfee? Oh, that guy. You may have heard him once or twice. Yes, yes, yes. If not, you will. <laughs> You'll be hearing from him. Oh. Uh, so he submitted an idea on a uh, trade partner rating database, which is something that I think we could all uh, definitely agree is a highly valuable tool. Um, 
just being able to go through and have an understanding of the, the strengths of who's out there and being able to have that catalog of information readily available would be a huge help to uh, a, a lot of people. Uh, so this was, again, focused on database to track the trade partner work performance and also uh, looking at things like, uh, um, you know, using that both in op for operations as well as uh, in the pre-construction process, trying to pick the right person. Uh, this had a, a, a relatively low reach, a low impact. I think I meant low reach on this, um, just due to the fact that it's uh, it's, it's going to be pretty concentrated as far as who's going to be able to use that and actually take action on that. Uh, the other one was that we assume this to be built out in house, if I'm not mistaken. We yeah, we talked about it either way, but I think we ended up <clears throat> when we scored, we we assumed it would be in house. Yes. Yeah, so that pulled pushed up that effort quite a bit, which which drags those scores down. So. Definitely something that uh, is, is interesting and useful. And I think going back to like 2016, 17, we even did a, I think it was a Bluebeam hackathon where we made something like that. I can't remember if it was Bluebeam or not, but it's, it's an idea that's been noodling around for a while and definitely deserves some, some look to it. Uh, but again, based on the current scoring system, I, I think the limited reach and the, the high effort were the two that really held this back from being a, a, a top scoring idea. Um, Go ahead and talk about this uh, next one as well because it's a uh, front of mind for me, Mr. Guy, uh, VDC, VDC intern? Yeah, VDC mm -hmm. intern over the summer uh, submitted the idea of using 3D prints for site logistics and planning. Uh, so he was saying, you know, we could use uh, a 3D printed model of the structure as well as some surrounding buildings and pieces of equipment, things like that, to kind of do a, a, a physical mock up at scale of uh, a site. Uh, leveraging the 3D printer that we have in-house. And uh, for his, his uh, summer intern project, we had actually printed his the project he was working on. I believe it was 24 Rio, as well as... Uh, Megan's? Megan's, thank you. Uh, which was 315 College, Maine. Sounds uh, about Something right. out there in College Station. Um, but so we'd had some success in printing those, and that's, I think, where this came from, as well as... Uh, having advocacy from others in this realm. So this was a relatively low impact. We were really uncertain about it. Uh, it had a decent reach because we are speculating this is something that could have could be used by uh, a lot of people, um, superintendents, QMs, PMs, foremen, our, our hourly folk. Uh, so it had a pretty good reach on it. The impact is kind of questionable. Uh, we do have things like pole planning boards and swim lanes already. Uh, and we also have people like Cesar out there making these animations early on in the process to help us kind of visualize, if you will. But because it's already aligned with some things we were working on uh, within R&D and uh, we had the tools for it, it's really a, it's a lot of print time. Uh, these structures take uh, a lot of time to print on the 3D printer, but it's also a couple minutes to set it up and we walk away from it. So this moved into the quick implement category. We're currently working on this for uh, South Laredo. So we're the 3D printers off in the background, printing off the South Laredo project building. <laughs> yeah, 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 you see it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be taking that and then also uh, using the uh, laser cutter that's up in Dallas to cut out the terrain features, um, as well as probably some neighboring buildings and all that, and you know, hopefully take... Uh, three by six, four by eight, something in that area board and hand it to the South Laredo team and they will have a scale model of their building, any terrain they might have, have it all labeled with streets. Uh, we can show crane radiuses and things like that. So it, it should allow them that physical manifestation of logistical planning that we do in Bluebeam and all that. So that'll be uh, very interesting to see how it, it shakes out. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Fritz, you want to talk about the next one there? Sure. Uh, a gentleman named Austin <coughs> Robertson submitted an idea, not another who, project. Who is it? Austin Robertson. If you don't know him, you're about to. Uh, not another project kickoff. Uh, essentially, stream. the idea was to streamline the overabundant project kickoff meetings that we have, make sure that people are in the meetings that they should be and they're not being, you know, not getting uh, fatigue from all the meetings and, and, and hearing things that aren't necessarily, doesn't don't necessarily pertain to them. So just streamline that effort. Uh, that way we can be a little bit better positioned. People will actually be you know, kind of more engaged in those meetings that they're actually you know, needed for. And so we don't kind of, we don't lose things. They don't slip through the cracks. And I think that was one of the big things about the idea was it had a high impact because 
if something is missed in these meetings, it can have a pretty detrimental effect in the future. So Definitely. if people are more engaged and, and only in certain meetings they need to be, they're gonna they're gonna pick up on more details. However, it did have a, a lower reach because it's it's primarily just the project kickoff team. So people like myself. Well, and I think on that reach too, it, it had a high reach. Uh, as far as the the number of people at impact, but it was that frequency. Uh, I want to say we looked at we assumed the average project to be about twelve months, which meant that it was only mm -hmm. you know a quarter really. Whenever we look at things by quarter, that's right. how we score everything. So while it, it touched everyone, it didn't touch everyone frequently and enough to score highly. <laughs> right. So uh, it's in it's in line for a more discovery effort to see how we could you know even just slight tweaks to the current process just to make it a little bit more enjoyable Definitely. for everyone. Well, and one of the things too that these ideas are are suffering from to no fault of their own is we changed our impact evaluation starting in June, July area. Uh, so relative to some of the earlier ideas, these are scoring uh, low. Uh, we're, we're, we're in the process of correcting that. We're actually getting together uh, on the 9th, Monday the 9th, to go over and rescore uh, a lot of those ideas. I guess it's probably when we'll be signing this out. Or maybe today, Friday. Maybe we already scored them. Maybe it already happened. Maybe maybe, maybe it didn't. Uh, mm -hmm. But So some of these ideas that are in the queue and scoring low might actually come out much better uh, in ranking than they're currently presented just because of the, the improved scoring system that hasn't been 100% implemented. Uh, just a couple more to touch on here. Uh, Ms. Autumn Wyatt here in Austin and Precon. Uh, had a submission on a uh, Microsoft how to's and she was uh, looking for a uh, kind of a repository of information, a way that people could get training experience on how to use some of the Microsoft pro uh, products that are out there. The whole Microsoft suite, you've got word, Excel, uh, I guess we don't use project a whole lot. Um, PowerPoint. Um, I know there's others out there. Uh, Share, teams, right? SharePoint. SharePoint. Yeah. There's, there's a, a that lot. Video one. Uh, Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, all the power stuff. So there's a lot of stuff out there, and uh, you know there's um, a lot of value that can be brought out of those as well. Microsoft Forms, uh, but not everyone is familiar with those. So she's kind of looking at how can we get people more engaged with these? How can we get them up to speed on things? And I think Microsoft has a lot of good information out there. Uh, so we haven't made a move on this yet. Uh, in part, because I, I think it's probably a lower on the impact scale. Um, there really wasn't any risk reduction in our scoring whenever we looked at it. And then on the positive impact, uh, it, it kind of seemed like those things where it would certainly help people, but probably not be life-changing either, uh, especially whenever you, you know, we only have low, medium, high for the positive impact it can have. So whenever you talk about some of these very extravagant ideas that have a high impact, and then you have, uh, you know, something that's uh, maybe impacts people not every day, but still has a uh, drastic impact on how a project performs that we put in the medium category. These types of things that are really like small quality of life improvements tend to fall into the low category. Uh, but the plus side of this, I think we could probably team up with IT and find some way, I say IT also, uh, people services, and identify some of those trainings that are out there and some of the things that Microsoft has already created and curated and just get it into the hands of people, maybe make it a little more visible for them so that they know where and how to go find those. So we mm -hmm. re really like that one, Autumn. And it had a spectacular reach because I think just about everyone uses Microsoft <laughs> products yeah. every day. Yeah. Uh, these last two, Dr. Fritz, I, I believe are are your very own. Do you want to give us a, a rundown on on each? Sure. So the, the first one was a precision load placement. So essentially tower cranes, making sure tower cranes are, are dropping um, their their payload in, in the correct location, especially when you don't have kind of line of sight visibility from the actual tower crane and you're relying on the radio to, to get you in the right place. It would essentially just be some some way of some having some device on the crane itself to know where it's lo located and then something out on the boom or, or even something that you could play, place on the load so it kind of has that that two-way directional. It can kind of track where it is and location-wise and so that you can actually lower it in the right place. You would have a little device that you'd stick on the ground where you want it and the crane could kind of, wouldn't do it for you because that seems kind of scary to just kind of automate that whole process but it would at least give you kind of directions to the crane operator like, hey, you need to swing this far out, you need to push the, the 
and I might be saying the wrong words here. You might need to push the boom out a little bit long, you know. Trolley uh, out. You're trolley. Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. That's what I said. And so it essentially just kind of reduces the risk of, of dropping it or, or the, the load swinging and, and hitting something like a, you know, a slab or something above you when you're dropping it. Um, I think one of my favorite things about this <laughs> idea is you, this, you noticed this and submitted this while you're out in the field at 1301, right? Yes. Or the, shortly after that. They were dropping something on the third floor, um, kind of back around near the roadway and the crane couldn't see it. And so Brandon Arias was kind of telling him where to put it and everything went fine and there was no issue. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you just saw that opportunity for improvement from being there in person and yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, seeing kind of how that operation occurs. Mm-hmm. Very cool. That was, I, I like it. I think it's a very cool idea, especially whenever you talk about some of the AI tools and machine learning and all that that could uh, really optimize uh, picking and placing things. Um, yeah. Even down to, you know, should you pick that load first or this load first? I, I think there's a lot of opportunity in there to improve those processes. Mm-hmm. Also, a lot of risk. System that you want yes. to be like <laughs> yeah. dialed in. <clears throat> uh, but really, the big thing that held that back was reach, I think, right? It yeah. was, uh, we were kind of speculating there's a handful of people, uh, superintendents, assistant superintendents that would be working with the crane operator for the most part. And while the trade partners would benefit, we don't currently track that. And uh, really, someone more on the budgetary side of things or on the quality side of things probably isn't going to see a real strong benefit. So it kind of restricted those numbers to some degree, but still very, very interesting one. Could be a lot of fun to look into in the future. Yeah. You want to give us our last one there, Dr. Fritz? Yes. It's, it's about forecasting the impacts of weather on, I guess, the, the, the construction schedule. And so it's it's not just like... Okay, if it's storming one day, obviously you're going to close the, the site down. But it's it's everything, right? So if you have high winds, maybe that reduces the, the efficiency of, of your trade partners by 15%. And so they're not going to get as much done as they normally would. If something like super hot, right, they're not going to work as hard and they're going to have to take breaks um, because that's required, right? Oh, sure. <laughs> it's requiring that they take breaks to stay hydrated, which is great. And they should, but that's just going to lower their, their output a little bit. And so it's about, okay, if we, if we know when the project's going to start and how long it's going to go, we can use, you know, typical, there's, there's data sets out there about, you know, what is the climate, what, what's the weather going to most likely be like in the future? You can kind of predict that out and be like, okay, you know, we're only going to have two days where we have to close the site down, but we're going to have 10 days where we're going to work at, you know, suboptimal efficiency. So really we have, you know, eight delays, for, you know, eight weather delays versus just, Two and that, that math doesn't work out, so don't don't calculate it. But <laughs> um, but it's essentially you know, and so that information would kind of go back. You know, if we have the weather for one day, we can tell the supers, hey, like you know, it's going to be very windy today, so don't expect you know your waterproofers to get everything done that you expect them to do and things of that nature. Um, nice. And so that was kind of the idea there, and so we could use. But it looks like there's actually tools out there that we could use through this, where we could kind of develop something in house, kind of use. I was surprised data's. too at how quickly we found something yeah. off shelf and what was it weather build or build? I, I, forgot the name. I think it was weather build or build weather. weather. I think build. weather build. Weather sounds build better. sounds right. Yeah, from bulk source. Bulk source. And uh, yeah, I think the kind of talked to them briefly in a chat. It sounded like they were in the thirty to fifty thousand dollar a year area. Uh, which isn't a small amount of money, but they uh, we didn't get a demo or anything yet, but they do integrate with. Um, P6. Procore and P6 uh, and others too, but I thought it was kind of interesting that they have this, uh, you know, some pretty big savings that they advertise coming from the use of their tools and, you know, integrating with things like Procore and P6. Uh, I'd be curious to perhaps catch a demo and see if it's able to take that real time uh, weather forecast, uh, you know, looking out two weeks and say, hey, you've got these activities scheduled to occur, but they're going to likely be impacted by the high winds or whatever. So instead of having this done in eight days, it might take you 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't know how all that works and all, but I think that'd be a a very interesting tool to look into. Uh, Because weather happens. happens. That's what you said multiple (laughs) times. All the time. There's always weather. There always is. Sometimes it's nice weather. Sometimes. Sometimes it's not nice weather. Mm -mm. You got to punish that weather. Yeah. Well, hopefully this was something useful, fun, maybe. I don't it's know. Fun I don't for know me. if I really just, yeah. Well, you always have fun, right? Oh, R&D's fun. Right. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll keep doing these every other week. Uh, we might come back with updates on some of these ideas that we discussed next time around. We'll discuss new ideas that have come in. 
maybe we'll be going through some of the back catalog, some of our highest scoring ideas, and talk about uh, what happened with them, some of the ones that have been implemented, some of the ones that are to be implemented or being worked on, uh, ones that were very interesting but got put on hold for one reason or another. So any feedback anyone has on what they would like to see or hear, uh, let us know. In the meantime, uh, stay innovative out there. Thanks.